Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design Now. Today we're going to go over the most essential upgrades and modifications for your Voron 0.1. Before we get into that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing you already have a 3D printer, but do you also have a CNC machine, a laser cutter, a sheet metal folder, an injection molder, or a PCB etching station? If the answer is no to any of those, then you should check out PCB Way because they offer all of those services and more. Not to mention a huge range of materials, colors, and finishes are also available in all of these manufacturing processes. They offer 24 hour turnaround and low quantity orders, so be sure to check out PCBWay.com today. The first modification I made was the installation of the webcam. I'm just using a cheap $10 Raspberry Pi cam, and it just sits next to the Z axis rails here. This isn't really a specific Voron Zero mod, but it's something that I've never had before in my previous 3D printer. And it's just really nice to be able to you know, go downstairs. You don't have to run upstairs to check your print. You can just log on to, I'm using main cell and I've got a little webcam on the dashboard and you can view your print. So it's really, really helpful. The other thing that you will probably soon realize if you are using the webcam is that you need a little bit more light in this enclosure. If you're like me and you've got the printer in a spare room and on the shelf like what I have, the light isn't so good. And with the webcam, especially at nighttime, I mean, you can't see anything if you're you're printing this at nighttime. The LEDs obviously just illuminate the enclosure. It allows you to view the print on the webcam much, much better. This is a relatively easy installation. I'm just using some spare, I think these are 12 volt LED strips that I had laying around uh, and I've just got it soldered at the ends and I'm just wiring it into the next modification I made, which was the clipper expander. The clipper expander board just basically allows you to power more things. If you want to start running more fans, if you want to start running more thermistors in the enclosure, uh, and if you want to run, for instance, like the Nevermore, you're probably going to run out of power ports on your current setup. I've currently got my Nevermore and also my LEDs running into the Clipper Expander. And what's great about it is that within the main cell dashboard, you can control these MOSFETs. So you can, for instance, control the intensity of the LEDs and also of the Nevermore fan. The next upgrade that I made was the Nevermore Micro. So this was the first time that I was printing with ABS. I never bothered to do it on my AnyCubic i3 because I didn't have a heated chamber. And what I soon realized was that the fumes from ABS are quite a bit stronger than PETG and PLA, which is what I was usually printing with. I did start to get headaches when I was in this room and this thing was printing and I read up and quickly realized that, yeah, this stuff is really not good to be breathing in. And it's the same for PETG and PLA. The fumes with those filaments are just not as obvious. So I decided to install the Nevermore Micro. You can completely self-source this yourself. There is a GitHub where you can get all the files and download it. Alternatively, you can buy a kit which contains the fix-ins and also the fan. Just a word of caution, the sun on uh, fan that you get with a lot of these kits is 12 volts. So you probably need to use just a little butt converter to step the 24 volts down, which is what is on this system, down to 12 volts so you can run the fan. Alternatively, you can just buy a 24 volt fan. With the kit, you also get a packet of the Nevermore carbon pellets. Again, you can self-source these yourself, but you've got to be careful because some of these uh, variations of the carbon pellets, they can actually oxidize and rust the, uh, the bare metal parts that are in the Voron Zero. So just check out the GitHub. You can see some horror stories of people that have completely ruined all their linear rails and any exposed screws and those type of things. These carbon pellets, they last for a long time. Um, I've actually only just filled it up again for the second time. I just started to notice the ABS fumes were getting a little bit strong and I could actually detect them when it was printing in this room. So I've just swapped them out and it really does do a good job of reducing those fumes. It is night and day difference from having this running and not having it running. You can't put a price on health. So I would say that this is probably the most essential uh, upgrade that you can make to your Voron or really any printer if you are doing specifically ABS printing. Even though you can run the Voron Zero from main cell and you can access this on your mobile phone, I did find it was slightly annoying to load up main cell on my phone each time because it has to refresh and it has to load in if you minimize the screen on your phone, which is a little bit annoying, especially if you need to really quickly pause a print 
or do something like that. So this was a really big quality of life improvement to the Voron Zero, and that was getting a five inch Raspberry Pi screen and getting the Clipper screen mod installed. This just makes it so much easier to just access everything with a main cell. The Clipper screen interface is really well designed. It's a free installation and you can use a tool called Kaya, which will just essentially install the whole entire thing for you. And the setup is really, really easy if you use that installer. And if you're interested in this specific mount that I made for the Clipper screen, uh, I've just recently put out a video showing how I made it in Fusion 360, so you can check that out if you want. There are other screen modifications I've seen. There are little small ones that you can install down here. I don't think it beats kind of a touchscreen experience. And it's only five inch. You can see it kind of fits quite nicely here. You can mount this wherever you want, really. I see a lot of people mounting it down here at the front as well. Now, as I've been using Avora more and more, I've kind of changed my initial impressions of it. And I don't think it's actually that well designed of a printer. If you need to make any changes to the, to the frame or to the extruder or the tool head or anything like that, it's a complete pain in the ass. Now, if you 3D print for long enough, you are probably gonna experience some sort of clog or jam where you need to access either the extruder or the hot end. The stock mini afterburner is a complete pain in the ass to try and access for maintenance. So that was the next modification I made. I swapped it out for the, I think it's called the mini after Sherpa. And basically it splits the hot end and the extruder into two components. So for like instance for me, when I first had to take apart the mini afterburner, it was because of the, the nylon gears on the extruder had stripped and it was starting to skip when it was extruding. Yeah, you've got to take apart the entire thing to access it. Now with the mini after Sherpa, it's split into two. So you can see this, this top part is the extruder and you can access that and you can take that apart and it doesn't affect the actual hot end and vice versa. You can take off the hot end and you don't have to take apart the extruder. Uh, this is just gonna make maintenance much, much quicker and easier. This is quite an easy modification to make. There are full instructions on how to get this set up and running on the GitHub. And the last modification that I made to the Voron was the Kirigami bed. So this is an all metal bed. I'm sure many of you Voron Zero users have experienced this where you level your bed, a few prints later, it's not printing as good as what it was. And this is just because honestly, I think these plastic ABS parts for the bed, I think they're just sagging a little bit over time. You're getting some creep in there. And this was really an annoying thing because I had to constantly tweak that initial first layer. And this was a little bit of a, of a painful installation having to take this all apart. Again, with the way that this Voron Zero is designed, they really didn't think about maintenance and doing upgrades to it. Uh, luckily, you don't have to take apart the entire printer frame to get this out. You can just remove the, the Z lead screw and you can just remove the, the rails as well. You can take it off. You don't have to touch the rest of the frame. It took me a good few hours to get this installed. If you follow some of the tutorials online, it makes it look like even more of a task than what it already is because they install the lights that come with this Kirigami bed. I could not be bothered with that. I don't care about flashing lights and all those type of things. So I opted to ignore that. And that really does speed up the process because you don't need to rewire the heater bed and all of that. So far, I think it has improved things. It's a little bit hard to say. Uh, I do feel that the that initial layer, once I get the bed level, it does stay like that for quite a while longer, but I did still have to tweak the uh, the Z offset quite a few times. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why. What I think it could be is that these bed adjust nuts down here, they could be coming loose slightly. There's no thread lock on them. There's no like nylon lock in within the nut itself. So it's just relying on the force of the spring to push against it and to keep it in position. But I feel like, you know, if you're printing for hours and hours and hours, those vibrations, maybe it's just unloosening that nut a little bit. And that is maybe offsetting this bed to becoming unlevel again. I'm gonna put some light thread lock on these uh, bed adjust nuts and see if that does improve things. It's definitely a much more rigid bed for the Voron. Uh, and if you take a look at the, the new LDO kits that are coming out, they all 
come with the Kirigami bed as a standard feature. Once you take apart the, the stock bed, you just realize how many nuts and unnecessary parts there are that goes into that stock bed. And also another thing that I discovered when I was taking it apart and installing the Kirigami bed was how loose all of the nuts were. I would highly recommend making sure that you put thread lock on everything on this printer. Any bolt should have thread lock on it. So when I installed this again, I made sure that just everything had a lot of thread lock on it. Do not want it coming loose from those Z rails again. So all of these upgrades have definitely improved uh, the print quality and just the experience of using the printer. I will say though that the best modification I have made to this printer uh, in terms of actually improving print quality is starting to use this stuff. I have had a lot of issues of getting the first layer to adhere to this bed. And what I've been doing is I have to really, really squish down that first layer to get it stuck. And then what happens is I get a lot of over extrusion and stuff starts to stick to the nozzle and it starts to look very, very messy. Also maybe because I'm squishing down that first layer so much into the bed uh, with the stock bed that I did have, you know, that could maybe be causing a very slight creep to sit in because I'm applying a little bit more force than probably what is needed to lay down that first layer. I looked at bed adhesion options uh, I was using prick stick, but it's a complete mess. I then did put masking tape on it as well and then put some prick stick on that as well. And that doesn't work that well. It's a little bit messy as well. So I got hold of some of this. This is like, this is like eight pound for a bottle. You put a tiny little spray on it. It doesn't actually feel like you're doing anything to the bed because it's, it's not sticky to touch. But this has been absolutely amazing. I have not had a single print lift off the corner I haven't had any fouled prints start since I started using this. It really does add a lot of confidence when you're printing anything, any shape, it does not matter. If it's right into the corners, it does not matter. This thing will make sure that your prints adhere. So I'm, this is probably the thing I'm the most impressed with. Uh, this is by far the best upgrade I've made in terms of printing quality. The last thing I want to talk about is a modification I don't actually think is worth it, and that is the uh, input shaper. This is from LDO. I don't think it's the LDO input shaper kit. I think just in general input shaping has caused me some headaches. I installed this thing and I was running various different tests. And if you don't know what it is, basically the input shaper just helps to minimize the resonance patterns that you get in your prints. Now from someone who just prints functional parts, resonance patterns in my prints, don't really mean anything. I don't really care about ghosting or anything like that. And there is actually a warning in the GitHub that doing the input shaping too much because it vibrates the machine to a really high frequency, um, it can actually cause some of the nuts and bolts and parts to come loose. Well, I was doing lots of tests and experiments to see if it was actually doing anything because I couldn't really get that clear results to show that it was actually working. I ended up causing one of the idler pulleys to come loose and for weeks I was getting really bad printing results. It was basically losing its position a lot while it was printing and yeah I just could not print with a thing. It turns out that the grub screw which did actually have thread lock on it uh, did come loose and I'm guessing it was probably from me just doing so many input shaping experiments. I think if you print you know models and things that need to be visually perfect then yeah give it a go and I do think that the LDO input shaper kit is good for that regard because it is easy to install. You can install it at the front of your hot end. And again, it's, it's simple to run. But yeah, for someone like me who just prints functional parts, it's just not really needed. Now, the last modification that I haven't actually installed is the nozzle wipe mechanism where a little server arm will flip up a nozzle brush and it will clean your uh, nozzle at the start of every single print. This is definitely an issue for me. I do find that my nozzle needs a lot of cleaning with a wire brush very, very often. So it'd be really good to automate that procedure. Aside from that, I'm still really happy with the Voron. I am thinking about building a 2.4 in the future. I'd really like something that can print as fast as a 0.1, but obviously a bigger build plate. All these modifications have definitely been a very good learning process and I feel much more confident about maintaining and even building my own 3D printer now. I'll put links to all the modifications uh, in the description below. Another huge benefit about this is that pretty much all of these modifications that I've talked about in this video, they are all 
relatively cheap. I'm talking 25 to $50 for pretty much every single one. And some can be done for even cheaper if you source it yourself or you know print the parts yourself. If you've got any modifications in your Voron 0.1 that I haven't listed here, uh, but you find really, really helpful, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to know what other people are running on their 0.1. That is it for today. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you later.